folks, I'm Eleanor and this is My Kitten Reads and this is a bit of a video that I wasn't really planning. Anyway, I wasn't sure what to do this weekend. I didn't really want to do a Friday Reads. Um, but then I spent much of the weekend picking up Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow again, which is this massive book about the American founding father that I've been trying to get through for like a year or something. Um, and I'm making some good progress, actually. I have, like, maybe 250 pages left, 260 pages, something like that. Um, yeah, but, um, so I picked this up and then I thought, well, I've read a lot of really good non-fiction over the years, so why don't I talk about some of that? So this video is a whole bunch of non-fiction um, <clears throat> from my collection. It's not nearly everything. Um, it's not even necessarily my favourites. It's just the ones where I... I went across the shelves and I picked what would be might be interesting to talk about. Some I haven't read for a long time, some I have. Um, but yeah, I have an interesting relationship with nonfiction. Um, as a teenager, I was really, really into sports, so a lot of my nonfiction as a teenager were sports biographies. Um, I've read quite a few, um, and I've got a couple here. So this one is one that meant a great deal to me. Um, Monica Sellis uh, with Nancy Ann Richardson. Monica from Fear to Victory. So this is the story of the first part of Monica Sellis' tennis career um, and her life. Uh, it was written pretty much just after she made her comeback, so it doesn't cover everything. But what it really was really important about it and what made me cry a lot um, when I was a teenager is the fact that it looks really in depth into what happened to her after she was stabbed on court in Germany. Um, not just her physical recovery, but it, it really delves into her mental recovery because she was, she was very depressed and she, sometimes she couldn't even leave her house. Um, it was the mental issues, the fear that was so difficult for her, her to overcome. And it's really compellingly written about in this book. It's a very old book. It can be a bit hard to find. Um, this copy I only picked up in the last couple of years, um, as a secondhand copy that I found, but, um, it's a, I found it a really compelling read. It's a little bit out of date. Like I said, it doesn't cover the second part of her career. Um, but I think it's a really interesting look at recovery from an attack that was unexpected, um, from when you, you know, when her safe space was on the tennis court and that was taken from her. So um, it's really, really interesting and I really like Monica Sellis, uh, Monica from Fear to Victory. So I've read a lot of cricket books over the years. There are a lot sitting on my shelf, but one of the most prolific Australian cricket writers over the years has been Steve Waugh. So this is Out of My Comfort Zone, his autobiography, which is a tome and I've only actually read once, but he's not only really was a really prolific writer when he was an Australian cricket player, um, he was a really good writer. I've got at least one of his tour diaries. I've also got probably the first sports book I ever actually got was for my birthday and it was Images of War, um, which is his collection of photographs from touring um, that he did um, in support of uh, his charity in India. But this is his autobiography. Um, I said, I haven't, like I said, I've only read it once and it was a long time ago, so I really do need to reread it. Um, but... It was really well written and fascinating, um, a fascinating insight into a mind of a cricketer who was not only the captain of Australia, but honourable, which <laughs> given today's Australian cricketers is something that I really like. Like he, he was tough, he was really tough, but you know, he, he, he was, I reckon, honourable. So that is Steve Waugh's Out of My Comfort Zone. Okay, now we're moving on to some more recent reads of mine. Um, so I think next I'll talk about this one, which is James Tiptree Jr. The Double Life of Alice B. Sheldon by Julie Phillips. Um, this is about the science fiction writer James Tiptree Jr. who was the pen name for Alice B. Sheldon. So um, this, this is a fantastic book. Um, it really, really delves into not only her writing, but her life. She had a fascinating life. Her mother was a fascinating person. Um, but she also, I mean, Alice B. Sheldon, she, 
she was um, in intelligence in World War II. She was a member of the CIA for a while. She was a writer. She had all sorts of jobs. Like she was a chicken farmer for a while. Um, you know, and she had this really complex relationship with gender, um, gender and sexuality, to be honest. Um, and this book really sort of delves into that as well. Um, and yeah, so, um, yeah, I really love this book and it's on my list to reread. Um, because it's really amazing and she's a really complex, interesting character who had the most extraordinary life even before she became a science fiction writer. And her science fiction writing is just fantastic. So, um, but she, you know, had a really complicated relationship, like I said, with gender, with um, sexuality and with mental health. You know, in the end, um, she it's not really clear in this book, but the author has said recently, you know, that, um, they did, she did have a suicide pact with her husband, um, and because he was, his health was failing and they didn't want to live without each other. So, um, yeah, it's a fascinating look at a really complex woman. Um, so yeah, that's James Tiptree Jr. The Double Life of Alice B. Sheldon by Julie Phillips. Okay. This is a very recent read. I think I read this this year, if I remember correctly. And so that's Madame de Pompadour, Mistress of France by Christine Pevet Algrant. I bought this at a museum when there was a Versailles exhibition. Um, and Madame de Pompadour is a fascinating character because she was the mistress of the King of France. Um, incredibly well educated um, and had incredible power in the French court. Um, and in, in the end, incredible power in terms of French policy. But it's a fascinating look at someone who has this power but doesn't necessarily know how to use it well um, and doesn't necessarily have the knowledge of the issues to make the right decisions. Um, so, yeah, it's a really fascinating look at a woman who carved out um, a position for herself in uh, basically... Uh, 18th century France I think it's 18th century France um and then clung to that position with such a tight grip for as long as she possibly could so um yeah it's a fascinating book about French, the French court before the French Revolution I guess um and this amazing strong powerful woman so that's Madame de Pompadour Mistress of France by Christine Pavet I'll grant. Well, file's gonna fall over. Um, this is another recent book, and that is uh, Talking to My Country by Stan Grant. This is basically a discussion of his history as an Indigenous man, the trauma that goes with that history, the intergenerational trauma, and the relationship of him to his country. And basically it's him saying, Australia, this is what you need to know about Indigenous people and what we've been through. Um, it's a really, really moving book. Um, Stan Grant is a journalist who's a fantastic writer. I've just seen a documentary by him on Adam Goods and racism. Um, and he writes really, really powerfully. And honestly, every Australian should read, read this book, I reckon. So uh, that's Talking to My Country by Stan Grant. So back on the sporting side of things, I haven't read this in a little while, but this is Senna versus Prost by Malcolm Foley. So Senna and Prost um, had this massively tense relationship in Formula One. And of course, it, most people, even if they don't like Formula One, know who Senna was because he passed away in a race um, when he crashed in uh, 1993, I believe. Um, no, 1994 um, at Imola at the San Marino Grand Prix. Um, and this is a fascinating look at the relationship between these two drivers. Um, I think before I read this, I had seen uh, the movie documentary Senna, which is very Senna heavy and uh, very weighted on Senna's side of, of, of the relationship. Um, this is a much more um, balanced view of the relationship. Um, but as it says, the story of the most deadly rivalry in Formula One. So um, if you're interested in Formula One, 
Um, it's a really, really good book. And I do actually think I want to reread this soon. A lot of these books, honestly, I want to reread soon because I haven't read them in a while. So, um, yeah, so that's a really great book about uh, one of the biggest rivalries in Formula One history. Um, and the next couple of things, I've got two more things. This is a little novella sized one called Dark Emmy by Bruce Pascoe. You've probably heard me talk about it before. Um, this. This book's amazing. This book blew my mind. So basically Bruce Pascoe has gone through a hell of a lot of source material from the early, early colonial settlers, as well as a lot of actual physical evidence, like physical archaeological evidence. And he's arguing that Aboriginal people in Australia were not hunter-gatherers. Aboriginal people in Australia had actually incredible levels of agricultural knowledge of agricultural systems and agricultural um basically everything that storehouses and you know civilization you know like there are these massive massive fish traps that go on for kilometers and you know there are there is evidence of you know stone buildings and all that kind of thing so we had you know it's basically arguing and it's using the words of the colonists themselves who were observing all of these things and then ignoring their own observations a paragraph later. It's amazing. This book literally blew my mind and I think it's seriously good reading and also full of seriously good ideas because it suggests that if we want a sustainable agriculture in this country, we should probably actually go back and look at some of what the Indigenous people did. You know, the plants they used their systems of rotations and their use of fire um, and and that actually might be healthier for the country and therefore more sustainable for the country. Seriously, it's an amazing book. Read Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe. I utterly adore it. And the last book on my list is The Fictional Woman by Tara Moss. So this is sort of half biography and half feminist rant um not really rant but it's basically tara using her career her life as a model and as a writer and as a woman to examine the way women are treated in the fashion industry the way women writers are treated um and the way women are treated in general um and it's a very powerful book it's amazing um you know it's, it examines the common fictions about women. So the things people say about women that aren't necessarily true, but would, that women have to live with because that's how people see women. So, you know, yeah, about motherhood, about body image, about underrepresentation of women and the betrayal of women in politics and media. Um, it's a really, again, a really great book that I really, really recommend, The Fictional Woman by Tara Moss. Um, so yeah, that is a massive stack of nonfiction that I have read over the years, some a long time ago, some fairly recently, um, but honestly, I thoroughly recommend them all. So yeah, um, let me know if you've read any of those books, um, or if you've got any suggestions of other nonfiction that I might like to read, um, and yeah, I'll be happy to talk about any of those books in the comments, and I'll see you all again really soon. Bye!